I have a quote here from uh, Rebbe Elimelech of Donov. And it goes something like this. We have a tradition handed down by righteous people whereby no day is like another. And sometimes what is done one day is a mitzvah. And the next day, the same thing is a sin. And no hour is like another. You should understand this, for it is impossible to expound everything in writing. But one who understands will understand. And mitzvah, if you don't know, is a Hebrew word and it can be translated as a righteousness or right act. Although with ancient languages, there's lots of beautiful context sometimes, but that's basically what it is, or lots of beautiful nuances. When I was younger, and by that I mean <laughs> in my 20s and 30s, I guess, and younger than that, I was extremely concerned about whether or not I was doing the will of God on a daily basis. And my understanding of the will of God was a set of prescriptions that I needed to rise to. I needed to match and become perfect and, and do them 100% all of the time. And if I deviated even a little bit, then I was... Um, opposite the will of God, which was something I didn't want to be at that time in my life. And it was enough of a concern to me that it was some, a matter of much prayer on my part when I was seeking God to answer me on what was his will. And I always had a, I have a, a, a big feeling inside of me, and I think a lot of people do, and it's, I used to think it was a problem, but now I like it more. <laughs> And that is that I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. <laughs> I don't want to, to do that. I want, to, I want to, to come up with my own things and do them. And so, you know, on that basis alone, my relationship with God has been a little um, fraught because I don't even want God telling me what to do because I'm afraid of how boring that would be or whatever. <laughs> I was afraid of being bored as well by being bored by being good, like reading scriptures all day long or something, which is ridiculous because I like reading scriptures. I could read scriptures all day long. It's interesting to me, but just you get the idea that I didn't want to be told what to do and I didn't want to be bored. And I thought the will of God would be telling me what to do and it would be boring. And also that I couldn't manage it. I couldn't manage to fulfill those prescriptions. But I feel like at one point God did answer me. I felt like that and, and it came to be more like what this quote is, that the will of God isn't a bunch of rules. It cannot ever be a bunch of rules. Now, it is true that there are certain kinds of behaviors and attitudes in life that are the mark of a mature human being and that are the mark of a being who wants to be kind and, and good and have character, have integrity, there are some same things that anybody who wants to be mature and have integrity and be kind are going to be doing. And it's worth practicing those kinds of habits and, and finding out people that we admire and how they live. And some of those things will, will be the same from people to people. But the will of God, I think, is much more mysterious. And it walks with you. And it's to let God in to you. And it will move you from um, your best thing. It, there's no way for the will of God to be boring because it can be more exciting than anything we can ever imagine. And um, it, is, um, it is to have that internal guidance 
and that internal, um, just to let that in, to be, for, for me, to be a person that would never, ever, ever harm anybody else and to be seeking to bless yourself and other people. And in order to do that, you have to be connected into this internal guidance that is you and to let that be enlightened by God, which is also you. And by the way, for those of you who are uncomfortable with my use of the word God or the will of God, um, it's okay. I think this is an important discussion for many people who are listening to me, but it doesn't have to be, that phrase doesn't have to be the will of God. It's, it is that internal guidance. It is that connection to, in fact, what you're connecting into is you're plugging into every human being all the time. It's kind of an omniscience of being able to understand at any given moment what is the highest good that can be done coming from you. And whether you call that coming from God, as you know, listening if you've listened to me at all, I don't mind using that word, but I understand that it's a painful or dangerous or meaningless word to some people, but it's being the highest you. And there's a certain way that you, there's a, well, there's not a particular way to connect into it. Sometimes it's just being willing, being calm, meditating, breathing, and letting yourself be guided. And that doesn't mean you have to hear, you know, something in your head and be told every little single thing to do because we get to organize and plan our own lives. But it's also a trust that the universe is ready to bless us more than we can imagine and ready to bless other people if we're willing to be the instruments of that. And and it will not be the same uh, from day to day to day. And um, I want to tell, well it might, but it might not be. I want to tell a story that happened with me when I was a young, I was a teenager. And in my home, my mother taught us not to drink coffee or to smoke cigarettes or to um, drink alcohol. And we didn't have that in our home. And that was a blessing, that was a good habit, and I was fine with it. Another thing that she added to that, to her, was to not drink soda, especially not to drink cola soda. So I never drank Pepsi or cola or Coke or Dr. Pepper or anything like that when I was a teenager because of my mother's rule. And I didn't consider it a hard thing because I loved my mother, so that was fine for me to obey that rule. But one day I, well, one of the things that I like to do is visit the, um, well, there was a lady, an older lady in on our street, and she was, you know, in her 80s or something like this. She was older, and she was a widow, and she was alone. She did have kids who lived in the city, but they didn't live with her. And so I would walk down the street and I would visit her at least once a week and just sit with her and listen to her stories. And I, we were great friends. I had a, a great time there. And one day when I went, she went into her kitchen and she came out with this tray. And she, she never really served me refreshments or anything. But this day she had gotten in her mind that she wanted to serve me refreshments and and we just had this really, we loved each other. And But she came out with this tray, and on this tray were two glasses and a bottle of Pepsi. And I was, in deep inside of me, I was horrified. I was horrified that I was being served Pepsi. And I, I wasn't upset with her, but I was, um, because I, I thought, well, maybe just people have different ways, but I was like, I have a choice here. I can say, no, I don't drink Pepsi and watch the smile wipe off of her face and her walk back into her room, you know, and, or I can receive her gift and the way that she wanted to serve me and, um, because I felt like that she needed to do that for me and I could drink a little Pepsi, you know, in the name of blessing her, and, but and it's some of you to some of you this may sound very silly, but I think we all might have choices with different pieces involved. But for me, the piece involved was Pepsi. Okay, and 
I chose, I, I realized that I could live my life having had a little bit of Pepsi, but I could never live my life knowing that I had, you know, would hurt her feelings in that way or not received her hospitality. So I chose to drink Pepsi and at that time, and of course since then I've had many, many, many Pepsis, but at the time it was a big decision. And I don't, not that God would have hated me either way of whichever choice I'd made, but I think the will of God is was choosing the higher thing. And yes, it's good not to have a Pepsi or not to have soda or not to have sugar. It, it, that's a good thing. But what was the best thing? What was the highest thing that would bless both of us in that situation? And it included drinking a little bit of Pepsi. Do you see what I mean? It's not about the prescription. It's about what's happening in that hour, like Rabbi Elimelech says. And, um, and, and I, I hesitate to bring this up because it doesn't mean to let yourself do little bad things because everything's all right. That's not what I'm talking about at all. Um, because all, all the little bad things that you might do, little, little um, dishonesties and little... Those things do take a toll on you, and that's not what I'm talking about at all. Because every time you do little bad things, it's probably because you're ignoring your internal guidance system, okay? So I'm not talking about that. That's a different kind of situation. But, but it's just to, you know, wake up in the morning and ask yourself, um, and be calm and say, what can I do today to have fun, to bless myself, to bless others, and to be able to know in situations when they happen, when the unexpected happens, to know how to live in that way with that internal guidance and with that, um, maybe not knowing it up here in your head, but it comes to you in your body almost without you knowing it just because you're open to it. And it takes a while to learn how to live like that. And I'm not saying I've got it down because I don't think I do but it's a beautiful opportunity that's available to everyone. Now I talk about this and this series about is about world peace. And in order to have world peace, this will of God, this sense of being led what the mo what is the right in any moment, what is the highest in any moment, this internal guidance system, this will of God, whatever you want to call it, this tapping into the life of the universe, being able to, it's almost like having telepathy, like when you're with other human beings, to have an empathy and a telepathy about what they may need if you have a desire to serve them. I mean, this is a way of living that is critical to being able to have peace because you have peace with yourself, you have peace with the God, with God or with the universe, okay, you have peace with the energies that are there, you have peace with the people that you're meeting, because no matter what condition they're in, if they're in a lower consciousness than you or a higher consciousness, I hesitate to use those terms, but um, you know we're all in different places, that you'll be able to connect with them wherever they're at without having yourself be triggered with your dramas, your paradigms. And so, and that is part of it, to, to get into this flow is to release a lot of things that you think or that hurt you or your things that you think are your rights. This is actually a, a very mature skill to have, but it's a necessary connection to make with yourself and with the universe, God, if you will, in order to move through life this way. It's a necessary way in order to have peace. Otherwise, you will be working based on... Uh, you know, not being able to handle emotions, not being able to handle your triggers, not being able to uh, have a sense of what needs to be done. And so, yeah, consider this and consider that each hour is not necessarily the same as the others and, and to be willing to hear from yourself and from God what can be done. And that doesn't mean, you know, to wait and sit around waiting to be told what to do um, that's not what that means. We can have our own thoughts and our own decisions, but just be connected into that guidance system that is available to all of us and that will lead us to peace 
and to not harming one another and to lead us will lead us to our greatest blessing. We need that. It's something we need. <laughs>